A lumpectomy, sometimes called a partial mastectomy, is a surgical removal of an area of breast tissue. Most of the time, a radioactive seed will be required to help your surgeon locate the area of breast tissue that needs to be removed. The radioactive seed is a tiny metal seed about the size of a small sesame seed. It contains a small amount of radioactivity, which provides a signal to help your surgeon locate the target area. It is placed in your breast by a radiologist and may be placed up to five days prior to the surgery date. During the surgery, your surgeon uses a sterile Geiger counter to the target area around the seed and then removes the radioactive seed along with the tissue. While the seed is in your breast, you are not considered radioactive. It is safe to be around other people, children, and animals. If your cancer is easily felt or palpated by your surgeon, you will not require a radioactive seed. We will also take an x-ray of the breast tissue removed in the operating room to make sure the seed has been removed from your breast. This x-ray will often show up as a mammogram appointment in your patient gateway, but know that this is not an appointment you will need to attend. After the surgery, the removed tissue, often referred to as the specimen, is sent to pathology to be looked at under the microscope. The pathologist will look at the margins, which refers to the edges of the specimen. If the cancer cells are at or close to the edge of the specimen or margin, your surgeon may recommend a re-excision. This means you would come back for another surgery on a separate day to remove a small amount of additional breast tissue. You will know your margin status when the final pathology returns in approximately one to two weeks after your surgical date. The lumpectomy may change the size or shape of your breast, but this is dependent on how much breast tissue your surgeon needs to remove where the target area is, and the overall size and shape of your breast. Lymph nodes are small, bean-shaped glands located along your lymphatic vessels. Your lymph nodes filter your lymphatic fluid, taking out bacteria, viruses, cancer cells, and other waste products. The purpose of a sentinel lymph node biopsy is to find out if cancer has spread from the breast to the lymph nodes under the arm. In order to identify the sentinel lymph node or nodes, a tracer is injected into the breast while you are asleep during the surgery. There are two types of tracers, radioactive tracer and blue dye. Your surgeon may use one or both of these tracers. The tracer then travels to the first lymph node or set of lymph nodes under the arms that drain the breast. These node or nodes are called the sentinel lymph nodes. Most women have anywhere from one to five sentinel lymph nodes. In order to perform the sentinel lymph node biopsy, your surgeon will make a separate incision under the arm. This area is often more sensitive than the breast incision and it is common to experience numbness here that is usually temporary but may be permanent. The sentinel lymph node or nodes may or may not be sent to be looked at under the microscope during your surgery. Your surgeon will discuss this option with you. If the sentinel lymph node or nodes does contain a cancer cell, what we refer to as a positive lymph node, your surgeon may choose to take more lymph nodes from the underarm area, which is called an axillary lymph node dissection. The number of lymph nodes removed during an axillary lymph node dissection varies from person to person. You may or may not have a surgical drain after having an axillary lymph node dissection. Please refer to the Caring for Your Drain video if your surgeon expects you to have a surgical drain. A lumpectomy and sentinel lymph node biopsy procedure takes less than two hours. If you require an axillary lymph node dissection, it may take longer. You will be under general anesthesia and completely asleep during the procedure. You will wake up in the PACU, or the post-anesthesia care unit, where you will stay for one to two hours following your surgery. When you first wake up, you may have oxygen, a blood pressure cuff, an IV, or other monitors attached to you. The PACU team will continue to monitor your progress as you wake up and they will help you get ready for discharge home. The surgical risks associated with a lumpectomy and sentinel lymph node biopsy include infection, bleeding, permanent scar, and swelling, what we call seroma. There's also a risk of needing additional surgery pending the results of the margin and the sentinel lymph nodes. It's also common to have numbness under your arm and up the back of your upper arm. Lymphedema is the accumulation of lymphatic fluid that can cause swelling in the arm or hand. A sentinel lymph node biopsy carries up to a 5% risk of lymphedema. An axillary lymph node dissection carries up to a 20% risk of lymphedema. 
For more information, please read the lymphedema fact sheet in your teach packet. If your surgeon uses blue dye as a tracer to identify the sentinel lymph node, you may notice that your urine may turn green or blue for a few days after the surgery. You may also develop a hard area at the site of the injection, which is what we call fat necrosis and will go away over time. About 1 in 200 women will have a rare reaction to the blue dye, which equals about a 0.5% risk of anaphylaxis. In rare cases, permanent nerve injury resulting in winged scapula or your shoulder blade sticking out or shoulder weakness could happen. We also ask that you watch yourself for any signs of infection and contact your doctor's office if you notice any of the following. Increased redness around the incision, foul smelling drainage coming from the incision, temperature above 101 degrees Fahrenheit or chills. You should also contact your doctor's office if you experience any worsening or darkening bruising or persistent painful swelling in your breast. For pain relief, you will be given two narcotic pain pills to take as needed after the surgery. Most women do not need it at all, but it can be especially helpful the first night. If your pain is mild, you may also take Tylenol. Please refer to the opioid reliever fact sheet in your teach folder. We encourage you to wear a soft, tight bra for support after your surgery, even to bed for the first two nights. You can use pillows to support your breast in bed as well. You should use an ice pack around your incision on and off for 20 minutes to reduce swelling. Sometimes fluid will collect at the surgical site. This is called a seroma. If this becomes painful, please call your surgeon's office. There will either be surgical glue, liquiband, which resembles a purple film, or steri strips over the incision. You can gently wash the area regardless and pat dry. Leave the steri strips or glue on until they wash off on their own. There will be stitches underneath the surface of your incision. They are all under the skin and will dissolve over time. We encourage you to move your shoulder on the surgical side as tolerated beginning one to two days after the surgery. Please refer to the post-operative activity guidelines and exercises sheet in your teach packet. You should avoid any activity that causes the breast to bounce for two weeks after the surgery, including running, jumping, and the elliptical machine at the gym. You should also avoid any repetitive pushing and pulling movements in your arm, including vacuuming. You should avoid any heavy lifting greater than 10 pounds for two weeks after surgery. You are allowed to shower 24 hours after the surgery. Do not soak in a bathtub or go swimming until you have seen your surgeon at your post-op appointment and have discussed this activity. A cancer diagnosis is a stressful event in anyone's life. We recognize that you and your family may have concerns as you learn about your new diagnosis and prepare for surgery. As a team, we strive to provide the best cancer care possible. Our clinical social worker is available to help you address your social and emotional health and is accessible both in person and by phone to provide supportive counseling, walk you through decision making, and help you navigate your care and next steps. Please refer to the oncology social worker sheet in your teach packet for more information. We also encourage you to look at the Dana-Farber resource guide sheet in your teach packet. Here you will find additional services or programs that may be helpful to you. We hope that you have found this video helpful and informative as you prepare for your upcoming surgery. As always, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to your surgeon's office.